Hey, I'm Chris F. from Make Everything, and today we are building this bookcase. Now, I know it looks complicated, but the assembly is very simple. You can really make this with a couple of basic tools. Check it out. Okay, so we're building this bookcase out of 1 inch by 12 inch finger joint pre primed pine. Now, 1 inch by 12 inch is a dimensional standard, so the material actually measures 11 and a quarter by 3 quarters of an inch thick. Now, because of that, my bookcase is actually dimensioned to use this material without ripping it. So, a lot of the work that I'm doing on this project is on the miter saw. Now, I set up a positive stop block and I drew this entire cabinet in Google SketchUp and after I done drawing the cabinet, I make a very concise and very specific cut list. Now the cut list allows me to pretty much, you know, effortlessly cut all my material up using stop blocks. I know exactly how many pieces I need, the lengths I need, um, and I can label them in categories that I do in SketchUp on the computer so that when I'm in the shop, I can really maximize the shop time and just bang through cutting all these pieces up. You can see how quickly I'm able to just set stop blocks, cut them up, the parts start to add up really quickly. And as long as I keep things organized, there's very, very little room for error. Now I need to make some of the shelf facing. So we're gonna have some three and a half inch thick facing, some four inch facing, and some inch and a half. So again, I set my fence, I know exactly how many I need of each, and I just run them through the table saw real quick and easy. Back over on the miter saw, I can cut some of the shelf blocking that I'm gonna use. Now I'm not using a sophisticated shelf mounting system on this, I'm basically just using blocks that are gonna be pinned and screwed to the side panels of each cabinet. And those are what's going to be holding my shelf up. The glues and the 18 gauge brad nails that I'm going to be using are more than enough to support shelves of this width. And it's going to be a quick and simple way to build this cabinet. Now you saw that I just marked out that thin piece of wood and that's what's called a story pole. I'm going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. But what it does is it just allows me to quickly mark all my uh, cabinet sides at the same dimensions. I also nailed these little pieces of wood into the table so that I could push these cabinet sides up against them so they wouldn't go anywhere. Now I'm using inch and a quarter 18 gauge brad nails and I'm using this little cordless nail gun. Um, I'm very confident in those brad nails with the glue to hold these shelves in place. I use this system quite often when I'm building a simple shelving unit like this. Now the other option you could use a router and you could router in a groove for all your shelves to sit in. If you watched my cedar closet video, which I'll put a link above, that was how I did the cedar closet because all the shelves had a three quarter inch thick dimension. Now these shelves are supposed to look as though they are inch and a half in some instances and three and a half in other instances. So that's why I'm able to use these big pieces of blocking and I'll put a shelf on the top and the bottom to gain that dimension. Okay, so what you just saw me doing was using what's called a story pole. So what I did was I laid out the bottom of all of my shelves on this piece of scrap material. And then I made this little jig that just allows me to slide my uh, cabinet side in just so that it doesn't slide around. It's not, it doesn't have to be precise. But basically what I'm doing here is using the story pole against the bottom reference of the shelf. And that's giving me bottom of all of my shelving. Now I mark the story pole with what size blocking goes in each location and then I use a square to shoot a line straight across the material and I put in this blocking. I'm very careful to make sure that I'm right on that line so that it's consistent across both sides of the shelves. Um, and the other thing that I'm taking into account here is I'm making sure to mark the front and the top of my material. That being said, if my square is a little bit out, I want all my shelves to be out in the same direction. So basically if my square was out a square by a little bit up, all my shelves would be a little up or down. That, be, that being so that when I put this thing together, I can shim it um, on the same side. I'm not trying to 
compensate for a twist. So this is a really quick and easy way uh, to avoid using the tape measure. The tape measure is where that human error comes into play. And now as I finish these up, I can put them over here. And now I only need to make uh, two matching shelving sides. Uh, the two sides that flank the cabinet are gonna be matching. If I was making a lot of these, I would actually test assemble the first one just to make sure that everything was correct. Since I just have one more to make, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the story pole to lay it out, knock my block on, then I can assemble them both at the same time. So now that I have all my shelf sides completed, I can start to put my shelves in. Now I just make sure that I have the right ones. I did orient them a little bit with uh, front faces. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to accidentally use one of the chowdered up, you know, faces. This stuff does come straight from the lumberyard, so some of them have some pretty bad gouges and nicks in them. So. I'm careful to make sure I use what's nice and clean. Now I'm checking my dimensions as I go because this is the first one. I'm adding glue to both the bottom and the side of the shelf panel. And again, I'm using inch and a quarter brad nails to pin these into place. I also have a wet rag around so that I can clean up any of the glue squeeze out. At the end, this cabinet is going to be painted on site by a painter. So I want to give them the best job that I can so that there isn't a lot of excessive glue squeeze out that they have to try and chip off or scrape out with a knife. And once I get one side in place, I can raise up the other side, get my glue in there and nail it in. And I'm using just a little rubber mallet, making sure everything stays nice and even. I want my face to be very, very flush and parallel. So I pin everything and then I go back and I add a couple more nails, check for square, and I move on to the next one. Now I'm going to be able to shim these with some uh, cross bracing if they're not square now, so I don't have to worry about it. And I'm going to add in the bottoms of the thicker shelves now as well before I do the next shelving unit. And then these just get nailed in, like I said, from the bottom. And these just give those shelves a little bit of illusion that they are four inches of solid material as opposed to just, you know, three quarter inch material with blocking. I can start on the pair to this side flanking unit. So it's two about 28 inch wide units on the sides and then a about a 60 inch unit in the middle. Again, I'm making sure to get rid of all my squeeze out. Nice, tidy job. With both of those nailed, I can get them out of the way and put them off to the side on my saw horses while I work on the larger unit. Before I get to the larger unit though, I'm going to take a square and I'm going to use just some scrap wood. I'm going to put a uh, diagonal brace across this in an orientation that leaves my shelves nice and square to the sides. Those will dry overnight and they'll be really, really stiff and set up by the morning. Now this, now this larger shelf is a little harder to deal with um, just because it is so much bigger and I have to do so much more reaching, but at the end it is the exact same process. So I'm gonna nail in on one side, nail in on the other, try and keep everything nice and square and flush. I can flip it up on its side, add some more nails to those shelves. So all the nail holes that I put in through these 18 gauge brads, I'm gonna patch with some ready patch prior to giving this to the client. I just like to do a little bit of due diligence and just make sure everything looks nice and smooth um, before it gets into the client's apartment. I'm also adding some screws here just to give a little bit more stability to those horizontal shelves. Now here's my first chance to do sort of a test mock-up uh, and see how wide the unit's gonna be, check my dimensions and make sure that everything is looking good. I, everything checks out and I need to make some spacers now to space the side units off from the center unit. Now for these, I decided to screw these in with pocket screws instead of using the brad nails again. 
I just thought pocket screws would help me eliminate some of the holes that I was making. Plus, I wanted an opportunity to test out this new toy that I got from an auction. This is a Craig DB55. It is a pneumatic pocket hole machine. So this uses an air-powered drill to drill the pocket holes with an air-powered clamp to hold down the material. This thing worked really well, and now I can flip my side units down, and I can screw into them using the Craig screws. And again, this is just going to give me some stable material on the side to space out my other cabinets and also not have any visible fasteners. Now with both of those side spacers screwed on there, I can assemble the cabinet in a more permanent fashion just to know my dimensions. Now I'm using some clamps here temporarily, but this is going to accurately show me how wide the style is going to be. And this is going to allow me to put in some of the blocking that goes on these thicker shelves. Now I wanted to add blocking here with just glue and clamps let this dry overnight and that's going to make my shelves extra stable and also just sort of keep things and keep things nice and clean without adding a bunch of extra nail holes right on the top of the shelves where they'd be most likely to be visible. The last bit of blocking I need to add to add actual shelves to the unit is the top section. Now there is a four inch top shelf on the unit itself and in order to accomplish that I added the blocking similar to how I did on the others and put a shelf on the bottom side of it that would act as the top. You can see how I did it here just by nailing on some of that blocking and then nailing the shelf up to the bottom of it. Now I decided it would be best to screw the side units onto the center unit for my test assembly. And that'll just keep everything nice and tight so that when I do all my trimming, I don't have to worry about things being different when I get to the site itself. Now in order to do the trim, the important sections here are the base and the vertical styles because those are gonna dictate the size of my shelf fronts. Um, and those are what I really wanna be nice and tight. So I start with the base and I just tack this in place with a couple of nails because this isn't permanent. I tack the other small section in place too. You know, the big key to this whole unit is that it's able to be taken apart into three or four pieces and able to move into this house without having any issue. So I try to keep this built and designed in a way that it would be easy to take apart, but also I wanna maximize the amount of work that I can do in the shop because that's where the environment is the most controlled. I can stay as long as I want, I can make noise, and we can make it right. So I start nailing in the vertical sides and I'm careful here not to nail the entire cabinet together because I obviously need to take the whole thing apart so I only have nails on one side. And now the other key here is that the actual shelf fronts are not gonna be three quarters of an inch thick like the rest of the material. I want them to have a 1 8 inch reveal, so I run it all through the planer at 5 8 of an inch, and that's just going to give me that little extra detail. It's going to make the shelf faces never crack. They're going to look super nice, um, and you know something like that. I did run by the client and just made sure that that's what he was looking for, but in my experience, the all flat panels, especially when you do them in this method, unless you biscuit them and dowel them. Um, they're really always going to move a little bit, so you will wind up with some cracking. So if you can give yourself a reveal, it's somewhere for that cracking to go and usually saves you. 
So as I nail these on, I'm cutting them on the little rigid uh, portable miter saw. And this is just to kind of ma maximize my productivity and minimize the amount of time that I have to get off and go onto the table. Um, I'm working up on my table because it is the largest flat reference surface in my shop. The floor in my shop is in terrible shape. It's totally wonky and wobbly, but working on the table, the table seven foot by 12 foot, everything's nice and flat. Uh, and with the weather still being a little cold, it's actually much warmer up here than it is on the ground. So that was also a nice welcome change. Now this piece that goes on the center shelf, I can't install because that's where I'm gonna split this cabinet in half. I'm actually, after the fact, gonna cut that cabinet using the jigsaw, and that's gonna allow me to break the middle cabinet down into two pieces, which will absolutely be able to get down the stairs. But uh, I didn't show me cutting the cabinet. It was sort of an afterthought when I realized the scale of this thing, it would be much better to cut it in half. But you will see me put it back together when I get on site. Now I'm just making sure to clean any glue squeeze out with a wet rag too. I want to make sure that I do the nicest job that I can. And glue squeeze out can be a pain to paint and the painters would have to chip it out. So I do my best to remove it so that nobody else has a problem with it. So now I'm going to take some ready patch and just patch in all those nail holes that I just made. You know, this took maybe about an hour, but I think it was worth it. I just like to give the client the best finished product that I can um, and then let the painter go from there. So I just take the ready patch, patch in all the little nail holes that I see, and then I go back in there with a sander. And I'm using this Mirka uh, six inch D-Rose sander, which you're going to see in a second. Um, the thing is unbelievable and it really got this thing sanded down to a glass smooth finish. I have this sander hooked up to a vacuum underneath the table and it's a big help for when, you know, I'm doing a project like this. I don't have to worry about wearing a respirator. The vacuum is HEPA filtered and that basically completes my assembly in the shop. Now at the client's house, you can see that middle cabinet broken down into two pieces. And the way that this thing lays out on the wall is pretty specific. So the first thing I have to do is cut his existing base molding using an oscillating tool and pull that out very gently. Um, now I'm cutting it straight against the wall and I will cope in some other base molding in the future. But one of the things that I think is most important whenever you're removing trim in a finished house always remove the nails from the trim as soon as the trim comes off the wall. Those nails will find their way into furniture or onto corners of walls. They'll scratch the floors. So I always like to do, you know, a good practice. Take those out as soon as you get there. Now getting my bottom cabinet in place, I can take the upper section of that middle and put it on there. And you can see all my spacer blocks there in, in place so that this thing has the correct dimensions. I don't have to worry about the kerf of that cut that we made to you know, split that cabinet in half. I'm using three quarter inch plywood to block them back together with some glue and that's definitely gonna hold really well. I can bring the side cabinet in now and I can use a little bit of glue and some nails to secure this piece and these are gonna be secured basically on the face and also in the back with some brad nails. And then I'm also gonna take some screws and put them through that center shelf area and just tie this whole thing in together super tight with nails, screws, and clamps. You can see moving through, getting the other section on, again, getting some more clamps in there, getting a proper amount of brad nails and some screws in on that other shelf. I am extremely confident in the stability and the rigidity of this cabinet. Um, it, it firmed up really, really well when all that glue dried and this thing is gonna be here for a long time. 
Now, all the due diligence that I did when I was building this thing in the shop, it all comes to play here. You know, it, it makes a difference that everything fit together nicely and that I, I spent the extra time to, you know, mock this thing up and, and temporarily nail in trim that I knew I was going to take off because now I'm able to put this thing together very simply. Um, I can finally add that face of the cabinet for the center TV shelf. Now, I just did add some screws to tighten everything up on the right flanking unit, but with this face frame installed, basically completes the shelving section of this project, which was a huge sigh of relief. And I can work on both the header and the base molding now as well. I have the header up there just sort of hanging around um, so I can make sure that all my styles are looking good. Check for my dimensions. The next thing will be for me to install the base. Now this is going to get a matching base molding that matches the rest of the room, but at the time that I shot this, I did not have it. It has since been installed and there are a bunch of photos and videos on my Instagram if you want to check it out. Here I'm trying to split the seam on that style because the piece is not long enough to get all the way to the end of this cabinet, but I have my little cordless miter saw down here so I'm able to quickly and efficiently do the work, get everything cut, get it nailed into place. Once I'm finished with the base, I can work onto the header up there and that's gonna get crown molding on it. Also not in this video just because I did not have it set up for that at the moment, but there is now a crown molding on there, but I still wanna make sure this thing is nice and tight and square in case the client were to decide at the last minute that he didn't want crown. I square this thing up, make sure everything's nice and tight glue it and nail it into place again with the inch and a quarter 18 gauge brad nails. Now with a unit like this, it is extremely, extremely important to tether this unit to the wall. So what you're gonna see me do in just a minute is I grab some angle brackets and I go up onto the top of this cabinet and I make sure that I hit studs and I screw two pieces of angle from the top of the cabinet into the wall, just in case a little kid were to try and climb on this or even a, an adult trying to reach for something, you know, this unit's pretty heavy and it could definitely do some damage. Once I install the three quarter inch plywood top on the cabinet, it is essentially complete. Now I did decide to put this three quarter inch top on there just because a lot of times people wanna put things on top of their cabinets and I didn't want there to be a cavity up there that was a surprise to anyone. So the three quarter inch plywood was a nice touch. Again, kept everything nice and firm, really looking great. I am very happy with how this thing came out. All right, that about does it for this project. Thank you so much for watching. Um, this thing came out great. It went together really easily. Um, simple material, the pre-primed finger joint pine from my local lumber yard worked out really well. Um, the simple face frames, everything about this uh, can be accomplished without the need for really specialized tools. You could really do this with a table saw and a miter saw and a brad nailer. Um, if you have any questions, leave them down below. I'd be happy to answer them. If you want to see behind the scenes footage when I'm working on a project like this, I post every day on my Instagram right here, at Make Everything Shop. I answer questions and I give a little insight to my day to day here in the shop. So you should definitely check that out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more content like this. I hope to see you on the next one. Again, I'm Chris Epp for Make Everything. Thanks so much for watching.